have some notes. So, you ready for me to start? Go ahead. Sure thing, go ahead. Okay, um, I just wanted to say before starting, this is going to be a sort of a State of the Union sort of a presentation on what's been happening with Emacs development, especially with uh, what's coming up in Emacs 27. Nearly all of these notes come from Ellie Zaretsky. As anyone who has been on the Emacs Devel mailing list might have noticed, I really haven't been present there at all in the last year. So nearly all of the maintainer duties now are falling on Ellie. Uh, work sort of absorbed me for this past year. So everything I'm going to tell you now is pretty much from him. He just wasn't able to attend this. Hey, Sasha, can you see me? Uh, no, I cannot see you. I just see a little green circle in the middle of my screen. Uh, anyway, to to resume, um, so the big some of the things coming up in Emacs 27 that people might be interested in is uh, built-in support for big integers. So now you can uh, just within regular Emacs Lisp, you can have integers of as much si as large size as you have system memory. So you can just say like let i and then have some big 20-digit long number, and you can do math on them the way you would do with regular integers. Uh, there will be no no overflow from summing integers anymore. Uh, the one of the really big items is going to be integration of HarfBuzz. There's a library called HarfBuzz, and the what HarfBuzz does is it's a text shaping engine that gives you support for ligatures and stylistic sets, especially in other languages that have lots of different stylistic sets. So in Hebrew and Arabic, for example. When two letters appear next to each other, there's often a rule for how they should be joined. And, um, and that, that's a ligature. In English, we have some of those rules too. If you're reading a printed book, you'll probably notice that if the letters F, F, and I are all next to each other, that actually gets presented in the book as if it were one single character. So uh, in the past, we had sort of uh, passing support for ligatures, but we were relying on a library that was um, uh, not going to be available any longer. So now we're moving over to HarfBuzz and that will give us not only new support, but also some stable support that we can maintain into the future. Uh, we just haven't exposed yet a way to select different styles through Emacs list. It's not something that's hard to do. HarfBuzz has good support for it. Um, we just need somebody who might be willing or interested in this part of C development on Emacs to come in and surface this functionality from HarfBuzz to Emacs list. And what, what, how we imagine that happening, for example, is maybe we want in a programming mode, FF and I to always be separate characters because uh, that would just make a lot more sense. But in text mode, maybe sometimes we want it, maybe sometimes we don't. Perhaps a text property could be used to set a specific style for a certain range because there are different kinds of ligatures. Uh, different letters can take different shapes depending on where they appear within a word. Um, and so that's something that we could uh, we could use volunteers for, but that'll be a big change coming up in Emacs 27. Um, also, the Cairo build is no longer experimental. So that build had a lot of bugs, most of which have been fixed. And so now the experimental tag has been removed from the configure script. So in Cairo is a text shaping and display library. And this is something that Wayland on Linux wants to see as the standard for all the applications. And this will be the path forward for graphical Emacs on Linux machines. It's also very important moving to this for Emacs to keep relevant with the future. Uh, you kind of think of Emacs as this surviving code base that's been around since the late 70s. But the thing is, a lot of the system functionality Emacs depends upon is evolving and changing. There are libraries that we used to depend upon or functionality we required from, say, glibc. It's going away. So in order for Emacs to keep functioning, uh, at least on a par with the behavior of native applications on different operating systems, it actually requires us to constantly be updating and improving and switching to new and better libraries that Emacs can rely upon. And this requires volunteers, especially on the C side, who are able to keep really keep Emacs alive and tracking these types of developments. So Cairo is one such development. If we were to stick with the same X libraries that we'd been using for forever, there would become there would come a point in time when they would just be deprecated and we wouldn't be able to have a graphical Emacs on Linux anymore. So um, Ellie could especially use help from people, from volunteers, 
to track and understand what all of these various technologies are, like HashBuzz, like Cairo, um, things that are coming up in the future, things that are in the in the near term that we might want to uh, we might want to support. So Ellie noticed that on Windows we used to be, we used to use Uniscribe for the text shaping and compositing, and now Windows has abandoned Uni Uniscribe. And they are using a library that can only be called uh, from C++ now and no longer from C. So we're going to have to use some sort of interfacing library in order to link to that, uh, to the new functionality. Uh, but but that's, that's it, it's sort of an area of concern, but only if we don't have people able to help us. I think this is something that a lot of people could, uh, could do without even having to do any coding, is to just keep abreast of what does a modern application need of Emacs's sort to run on Mac or on Linux or on Windows, and what are we going to be needing to support uh, from our code base in the future, and then just to make everybody aware of that uh, on the mailing list. We have now in Emacs 27 built-in tabs and a tab bar. So where if you've been using Emacs for the last 30 years, there have been various tab bar modes that have come up uh, in the past, where it kind of gives you within the window, within the, the frame, you have a little bar at the top, and if you click on it, you get to see different uh, contents, different windows uh, in, inside the window. But that's always been an ad hoc thing done by repainting what's inside of that window. Now this is a built-in. Uh, it's a graphical feature in Emacs. And not only does it switch between windows, it switches between window configurations. So if you've got all of your windows set up uh, for for debugging or for coding where you have, you know, your REPL in one window and, and your code in another window and you go to a different tab, when you come back to that tab, everything will be restored visually the way it was. So that's just that's just how modern applications work, really. But now we're getting that support for the first time natively within Emacs instead of as a Emacs Lisp add-on. Um, we have built-in support now for image scaling and rotation without relying upon image magic. So uh, in Ellie's words, image magic is a Pandora's box where we have seen a lot of crash bugs coming from inside image magic, which forces anyone maintaining Emacs to become both an Emacs developer and an image magic developer because it was difficult for us to get our needs uh, represented at the level of priority we needed them to be within the Im image, magic, image magic community. So now we have image scaling and rotation within Emacs um, itself, and that allows us to maintain it as we do any of the other C code that we're working on. Um, we also have a portable dumper. Uh, if you've been watching the Emacs Devel list, I believe this has been an ongoing discussion for a few years now, and this is going to be landing in Emacs 27. If you're not familiar, um, when you build Emacs, it creates a C uh, Lisp interpreter that really can't do much else other than evaluate Lisp. So everything you're used to about Emacs, some of the core functionality is in C. It's part of the core Emacs, so like text shaping and just and painting and, and drawing and things like that. Uh, and like I just said, image scaling and rotation now. But the majority of the functionality you're used to as being Emacs is in Emacs Lisp. And some of that Lisp gets loaded in when Emacs starts, but there's a very large body of Emacs Lisp that would always be loaded every time. So for speed, we don't actually load it into the interpreter, we preload it during the build phase. We get it into the Lisp memory state, and then we take an, a snapshot of memory. And this is tricky though, because there are, on a lot of systems, you have to know things about the heap and the layout of the heap very, very precisely in order for Um, John, we lost your sound. I think. And, and that's done without any requirement, without not needing to know the structure of the heap or any special hacks inside of glibc. Uh, somebody, people are saying they.
I am, I am. Okay. Um, it looks like my audio and my video keep going in and out. I am in Firefox here. Okay, I'm back, people are saying. Um, so just let me know. Direct message me if I disappear again. Um, okay, so I was saying about the portable dumper, that's going to give us a way to snapshot out uh, heap state and bring it back in during during startup time. That also might, in the future, give us some functionality, uh, like the ability to um, Okay. <sighs> okay. It says that I'm back. All right. So let me. I stopped some things that were running on my machine. Hopefully it was just competing. Um, we have initial support for the XDG spec, which uh, is, as you may be familiar in there, there's always been a standard in POSIX for the way that directories are laid out uh, at the top level. So slash USR, slash lib, slash Etsy, that sort of thing. But there's never really been a specification for user uh, home directories, which leads most applications to leave some form of dot named file in your top level of your home directory. So the XDG spec names three directories in particular, .config, .cache, and .local, with a meaning for each of these and how applications should store relevant configuration files or things that they may produce that can easily be blown away uh, in .cache. And Emacs, until now, has just been relying upon either .emacs.d in the home directory or a .emacs file. And we are now getting uh, support for the XDG spec. So you'll be able to have .config slash emacs slash init.el, for example. Uh, this is a little bit tricky in Emacs because we have so much code that makes directory location assumptions. Uh, there's millions and millions of lines of Emacs Lisp code out there, and a lot of it has, as the default, for example, some dot foo that it stores data into. And we want to get all of this data moved into the XDG file tree. So this is going to be an ongoing uh, shift, but at least we've now got support for this in, in core Emacs itself. Um, we have now enhanced, uh, enhanced NSM, which is our network security manager. So in Lisp slash net, there's an NSM module. And what this does is it separates um. Hello, is this testing? Okay, um, so if there's any need to query the user for an override for a security situation or really anything relating to the security aspects of that connection, that's now handled by the network security manager. It's not code that's in the URL library itself. Um, and this is nice because by separating out security validation from network transport, it will also allow other modules. Uh, to make use of the validation code as well. Um, there is a new built-in feature called display fill column indicator mode. So if you've ever used one of those modes that paints a little line or, uh, you know, colors the background at a certain column because you want to know when you're, when you're typing past 80 columns, who doesn't want to know that? Uh, that has always been an Emacs Lisp feature in the past that was a little bit ad hoc uh, some would always break down or not cooperate with other modes uh, very well and now this is built in you can specify whatever character whatever text properties you want for this indicator uh, this indicator column to have 
and it will track this. Uh, kind of a nice feature. We also have so long mode, so dash long dash mode. And so in buffers that have super, super long lines, you would, may have noticed that things can get a little bit slow because there are some features that just were never really built for dealing with 4K long lines, for example, in log files that have forgotten to use new lines. If you uh, invoke so long mode, what that does is it, it knows about a lot of the built-in modes in Emacs that tend to slow down buffers that have really long lines. So it just basically disables those all, disables them all in one go. It doesn't know about other modules you may have installed yourself that are slowing down because of long lines, but at least knows about a lot of the built-in things such as font lock or stuff that might be scanning for. I think that it's back now. <sighs> Sorry, guys, this is just not working very well. Um, last thing, and then and then I can uh, stop the yo-yo game. Uh, we have n get. We're now able to use n get text for internationalization of messages. So this is a very small step in the direction towards. Uh, in the direction towards full internationalization. And what I mean by internationalization is, let's say you're writing an Emacs Lisp uh, module and you wanna report an error. Right now, that error is almost universally English, or if there are special display strings, they're almost always just in English. Get text for a long time has been a library for having a database of these strings in a separate file so that somebody else can translate all of those strings in, into their language. And now whenever you need to display a string from your Lisp code, you just say such and such an error code under this name, it will look up the appropriate text from the right, um, from the right file, the right database of strings, and then display the string in that language. And, and that's end get text. So since we're, I'm gonna let I'm gonna let things stand there. That's all I have uh, for Emacs 27 development so far. Uh, quite a few things, um, but I will hand this back to Emmy.